away the Irish guy. And Garrett Southgate has once again brought on the wrath and ire from the England fans. Lads, it must get so boring. Every single international weekend of the year, this man is suddenly trends for being a wimp weasel of a coach who most England fans want to see thrown in a dumpster. Lads, every time England play, I hear the word yes man so much, I'm half expecting to find Jimmy Carey in my kitchen. Lads, <laughs> The entitlement from England fans. As an Irishman looking in, it's hilarious. We're an embarrassment. We can get to the deep end of to tournaments, but we'll never win them because we don't play the style of football you need to play to win. I think you should go after the Euros, but I think we will win it. I believe we will win the Euros. Well, which is it? Okay, Southgate should be sacked. But also, oh, well, he's still going to be the first England manager to win something since Batman was in black and white. It is absolute English arrogance to even think that even though you have a supposed manager who you hate, that you're still going to win the whole thing because, oh, well, we're just too good not to win. Uh, what? Do you know how many people over the last few years have sung, It's coming home! After, after a win. And then it's, Southgate out! after a draw five days later. If you truly think that Southgate is a complete bin bag of a coach and a massive negligent presence in the dressing room holding everybody back, then nobody at any point would ever think that England were winning anything. You don't win an international tournament in spite of a coach. Get him gone, save the Euros. Conte is available now. Graham Potter is available now. <laughs> Lads. There is no bigger clue of someone having absolutely no sort of football plan than suggesting both Antonio Conte and Graham Potter in the same breath. Two guys who play a completely contrasting style of football. Asking for either Conte or Potter is like being in a restaurant and asking for a pepperoni pizza or the head of a squirrel. You're gonna really confuse the waiter. It's like a big Hollywood director looking to cast a big actor as his leading man in a romance film. And so uh, it's either Zac Efron or Ricky Gervais. Huh? By the way, lads, if you think South Ball is defensively ugly to watch, Conte would want to make you chew your own gums. I mean, do you reckon Harry Kane would be happy to see this bloke again after his unhelpful Spurs meltdown? Um, no. By the way, this is an Arsenal fan who wanted Mikel Arteta sacked two months ago. It's not Mikel Arteta FC, it is Arsenal FC. Get him gone. This is done. I, I, I don't think football's for him. Plus, England fans are offended. They just lost a friendly to Brazil. And do you know why that is? Do you know why you've taken this loss so badly? Because you have all been spoiled by friendlies. This was the first time England lost a friendly match in nearly seven years. Losing 3-2 against France in June 2017 was the last time you lost. This is not a regular occurrence. It was so long ago that you had Tom Heaton in goal. The guy who is now just some bored backroom Manchester United pumpkin. Someone who's just a decoration at the training ground. Someone who hasn't played a Premier League match in five years and now just... I don't know. He makes himself useful by spending his afternoons making Rice Krispie buns for Ten Hag. Lads, Alex Oxley Chamberlain was in the middle of the park that night. Ryan Burton was on the left wing. Ben Gibson, Aaron Cresswell, and Jake Livermore were all on the bench. Those guys now all have as much chance of getting another England cap as I do of successfully breastfeeding a donkey. Ah, uh, I bet my milk would taste depressing. Personally, I'd probably rather drink a cup of Winnie the Pooh's pee. Lads, who cares if you lose a friendly? Who cares? It is a friendly, an exhibition match. Otherwise known as a Preparation match. Yes, preparation. Do you think your mum starts throwing an axe around the kitchen because she's accidentally burnt the practice cinnamon buns she was preparing for Christmas tea next month? This game doesn't mean anything. You lost to Brazil. Guess what? You will not be playing Brazil at the Euros this month. You don't have to worry about them ever again. It is fine. Christ, well, Spain lost 4 0 to Portugal in a friendly in the warm up for Euro 2012. They still went and won the whole thing with ease winning 4-0 in the final. Look, Southgate is not a great manager, but so? This is international football. The graveyard for either the old and past the coaches or the average milk muffins who are hiding in the cushy international comfort zone because they know they are not getting a better job in club football. Elite coaches are not in international management jobs. That's right now, Portugal has such an array of saucy, delicious superstars who would be an absolute joy to manage. And yet still, the Portugal FA could not do better than a former Wigan coach. Cristiano Ronaldo, Bernardo Silva, Rafa Leal, Jao Felix are all being micromanaged by someone 
He used to play for Walsall and Motherwell. And Martinez, he's not even Portuguese. What possible reason did he have? Freeman scrambling together an interview at the Portuguese FA. I mean, what was the secretary of thought when she saw him walk through the door, seeing him in the waiting room, holding a sad little hot chocolate and munching nervously on a crunchy? It probably looked about as weird as if you were to come downstairs at night to fetch a banana from your fridge at 3 a.m. and suddenly you find the cookie monster scratching his balls on your couch. Lads, do you want to see true failure as an England boss? Don't you all tell me that England are now the favourites for the tournament in spite of Southgate? That you could pick any random geezer down the pub and they would still be able to coach this team? The, the sad thing is, if I manage that England team, or you manage that England team, you could almost walk into the dressing room and go, you know how you play for your club, let's just do it. Uh, great, great plan, Mark. Look, I like Mark, okay, but um, he has managed in front of 40,000 people at Charlton Stadium and West Ham Stadium. Um, his team conceded eight goals both times against the likes of Randolph and Vicstar. 16 goals conceded in two matches. You'll excuse me if I don't take your team talk seriously, Mark. Oh, that really did sound really squeaky. I sounded like if Mickey Mouse was electrocuted in the bath. But yeah, I mean, people are saying that you could pick any random geezer down the pub and they would still be able to coach this team to success. No, no, no. Can I remind you of true total failure? People are bigging up this England squad as being too good not to win. No. Go back to Euro 2008. Ten English players had just competed in the actual Champions League final. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could have compiled an entire outfield team of English Champions League finalists that summer. And yet, the following month, none of them were at Euro 2008. It was because England did not even qualify. An absolutely all-star England team who, on paper, would demolish the current one for tea. I mean, lads, either Frank Lampard or Steven Gerrard in their pump would automatically be the best player in this current England side. No questions asked. Yeah, that England team had both of them. I don't care that Jude Bellingham is doing bits at Real Madrid. Right now, he is still not as good as peak Lampard. I am not blown away by this England squad because the England team you had from... 2003 to 2009 was better. And yet you didn't come close to winning nothing then. So where has this bitter entitlement come from? That Southgate should not be taking this team to the Euros. It's as simple as that. If England want to have a chance at the Euros, don't go with Southgate. Make the change before we fly. Southgate must go before the Euros. <sighs> Why? Okay. And, and then do what? Do you know what sort of monumental self-destruction, self-sabotage it would be getting rid of Gareth now? This is someone who the England squad love. Have you ever heard of a player groaning about Gareth in the eight years he's been in charge? Lads, we have seen blatantly unpopular England managers before. It is always so obvious when they are not liked. I mean, when Capello was in charge, you could just tell. Every England player wouldn't have bothered to attend his funeral. Maybe that's dark, but oh, let, let's put it this way. If they were all away in Moldova for a World Cup qualifying match and they're all sitting in the canteen and the Italian then starts choking on a sausage roll. Ain't no England player forking out the Heimlich maneuver for him. We have seen and heard since they all hated him. Even lovable, happy puppy Ben Foster has gone on podcast telling anyone who would listen that yeah, he liked his monster serial winner coach about as much as he likes kissing a gorilla's bum crack. Completely disrupting the England squad harmony now by dumping Southgate to appease the fans. At the last minute, it would be hilarious upheaval. It'd be like on Christmas morning. Your mom suddenly decides, nah! Santa Claus today. And so she decides to get in the car and drive to her mum's and as a replacement, you just get the bewildered old neighbor from across the street. The 84 year old Biddy with dementia, who's always confused why her potatoes don't talk back. But like when the Spanish FA dumped Julian Lopetegui a week before the 2018 World Cup, that didn't really work out so well for them, did it? Southgate might not be a top class manager, but he is familiar. Throwing him away now would be stupid. Look, yes, Josie Mourinho will be a dream coach for Euro 2024. I, I, I know he would. Oh, look, can you imagine how scared Luke Shaw would be? Mourinho would be fantastic, but he is not taking the England job. Eight weeks before a tournament. This is one of the greatest. You don't just ring him up at the last minute and ask him if he wants to do a job. It's a complete lack of respect. What, you think a man with two Champions League titles is just hanging around the house, eating copious amounts of toast and waiting for his phone to ring? He ain't nobody's interim last minute pick. Yes, I know his stock isn't at his highest right now, but so? I mean, would you ring up Britney Spears and ask her if she'll perform at your nephew's birthday party next week? Asking her to get on the megabus to Kalamara? 
No, but I think the fans think they were ever going to get a top class coach over the last few years instead of Southgate. Then you are deluding yourself. Nobody wants this job. Your last two managers before Southgate were head under from Sunderland and West Brom. I would compare this to the Ireland job because something really weird and strange happened in 2008. For some reason, both England and the Ireland FA, they did actually manage to somehow convince a supreme Italian serial winner. Someone so far out of both their leagues to join. Both Fabio Capello and Giovanni Trapattoni throughout their managerial careers had won a combined 14 Serie A titles, two La Liga titles, two Champions Leagues, three Europa Leagues, a German Bundesliga title, an Austria Bundesliga title, and a Portuguese Premier League title. I don't know how England and Ireland both got so lucky at once. Both Capello and Trapattoni were both replacing a broken Steve, both McLaren and Staunton. Two completely hopeless disastrous failures who failed to get their sides to Euro 2008. After failing to make it to that tournament, the England FA in particular raised their standard. I mean, when Spenor and Erickson left England two years earlier, they were just trying to choose between Allardyce, McLaren, Kerbsley and Bruce. You know, the managers of Bolton, Middlesbrough, Charlton and Birmingham. Yuck. A year later, and they were trying to break the bank for one of Mourinho, Capello, or Luis Felipe Scolari. But that was the anomaly. That wasn't the norm. That was a small window where international management look cool. It's not cool anymore. I mean, the England FA would probably be able to convince Eddie Howe to join when he was free and single after Euro 2020. But again, England had just lost that final on penalty. It would have been exceptionally harsh to bid Gareth after that. I mean, lads, forget about Jadon Sancho, okay? Because he's never shown himself to be a penalty expert taker at all. But if both Marcus Rashford and Bakayo Saka, two headstrong blokes who've nearly scored a combined 30 penalties in their career so far. I mean, Rashford have banged in an insanely last minute pressure penalty against PSG top bins. Just two years before the tournament, if they had scored their penalties, then Gareth Southgate would be a European Championship winning manager with England. And, and so then forget about all these nasty jibes on the internet. This guy would have spent the last three years being regularly invited on Graham Norton and Jonathan Ross. He'd have been knighted by the Queen. He would now be known as Sir Southgate. I mean, to be fair, he would make for the wimpiest looking knight of all time. I mean, Jamie Lannister, he is not. But it doesn't matter. He would still be held in the same esteem as Alf Ramsey. Lads, here is a spoiler. The next England manager is going to be nothing special. Southgate will probably walk after Euro 2024. And ah, uh, look, if Luton Town survive in the Premier League, I can see Rob Edwards getting the job because the England job is all about timing. The England FA have always shown to be reactionary. Nutcases who just want someone when they're hot. By the way, um, I don't mean that in the physically attractive sense. This isn't Baywatch, all right? I mean, are you kidding? Big Sam looks like Bigfoot's cousin. While Southgate, again, he looks like someone's face in the back of a spoon. I mean, do you think he is a housewife's favourite? No, he looks like he got the same testosterone levels of a dead flower. But Allardyce got the England job off the back of putting off the greatest game with Sunderland. Hodgson was appointed after a brilliant mid-table season with West Brom. I mean, to be fair, that achievement did look less impressive when six months later, Steve Clark at the baggies third in the Prem a month before Christmas. McLaren was given the England gig after having Middlesbrough reach a European final. So if Edwards keeps tiny little looting up, that's a good enough story for them. Chuck in the fact he has been employed by the FA before. I mean, he was England under 16 boss just three years ago. And yeah, the bloke looks like he could probably be the face of Gymshark 2. So, I mean, if that helps, uh, that the sight of him in a suit would cause mummies up and down the country to swoon at his first England press conference. But again, he is also someone who sacked after just 11 games at Watford. He is not an elite manager either. But England aren't gonna get anyone else. I mean, lads, if Nottingham Forest did not crumble like a sausage pie from Greg's earlier in the season, the next England boss would probably be Steve Cooper. England fans think the grass is greener after Southgate, and it mm. probably is. But it's not that much greener. Just a bit like a muddy lawn in November. Anyway, that's the interview. Let me know. What do you think? Let me know. Southgate in or out. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.